You are Locked On Chargers, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Chargers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, well, we are here with a very, very special edition of Crossover Thursday because we have one that we don't get very often. It's Locked On Chargers and Locked On Seahawks on today's Crossover Thursday. Definitely thankful for Corbin Smith joining the show and for me joining Locked On Seahawks. What's up, Hawk Nation, or whatever you call yourself, 12, I should say, I guess. But today we have a bunch to get into, including the biggest storylines for both teams because I think for the Chargers, it's a lot about health and, hey, maybe if they can do it defensively against a good offense and not just the Russell Wilson-led Broncos. But we also get into the biggest matchups from this game, and I think there's a couple that I really want to hit on before getting into what's going to win this game for each of these teams and then getting into what we think the score is going to be. But this episode is Crossover Thursday, presented by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is so much fun and easy to play. No competing with other players, just you versus the projections. Pick two to five players. If they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on your entry. It can take literally less than 60 seconds to enter. It's that easy. We love Prize Picks, and we know you will too. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. All right, Corbin. I mean, I think this is a, an interesting matchup between two teams who I think are in different spots because, I mean, the Chargers, even at four and two, a lot of fans feel like they've underachieved so far. Somehow are not happy with that. And, I mean, the Seahawks, I think, are, you know, at three and three. That's a great start for the team that was kind of written off at the bottom of the NFC West. So when you're talking about the Seahawks and the biggest storylines for them right now, where would you start? It's really going to be a departure from the first five crossover Thursdays of the season because I have been talking about how embattled and beleaguered this defense has been. And then they go out against an Arizona Cardinals team that hasn't been playing great football, but still they have a lot of weapons and they hold them to three points on the offensive side of the football. I mean, it was just one of those, every time those two teams get together, it's a bizarre contest. And Everybody thought there was going to be 60 plus points on the board in that football game. It ended up being 19 to nine, a (laughs) defensive slugfest. And there were a lot of really encouraging things for a Seahawks defense that had really been underperforming. And really, it's been a shocker. Everybody thought that this was going to be a team that the defense was going to carry them if they were going to win games with no Russell Wilson, with Geno Smith replacing him. And yet it's been Geno Smith putting on the Superman cape and the running game and a much better offensive line than expected. The offense has been largely what's carried this team up until Sunday, and then the defense finally showed up. And so that's the big storyline here. Was that an aberration against a team in the Cardinals that really self-destructed in that football game? They've self-destructed most of the season. Things are not looking good in the desert. Or was that truly a turning point where the pass rush came to life? They started using their personnel better. They're really athletic defensive tackles. Let's one gap with them and have them penetrate instead of read and react. Let our linebackers fly around, play three, four safety looks rather than two linebackers in the field most of the time. Was that a sign of things to come, or was it just one game where the opponent is one they've really mastered as of late? They've had a lot of success against Kyler Murray. That's really going to be the biggest question going into this game against the Chargers offense that, as I'm sure you'll talk about, hasn't necessarily lit up scoreboards the way that people thought and injuries have played part of that. Yeah, the injuries have been a huge part of that. And I think, I mean, going into last week, they had two games in a row where on on average they scored 32 points per game. So it was kind of one of those things where did they turn a corner was something we were asking before they went up against that really, really good Broncos defense. And I think one thing that's very similar between these two teams is it did seem like there was a turning point in the last game for the Chargers defense. And it came when they ended up benching their $82.5 million cornerback, J.C. Jackson, and putting in Michael Davis, a guy who had already been benched himself before in the past under Brandon Staley. And I think it's for the Chargers. Can you do it again, but against a good offense? Because at this point, the Seahawks are legitimately a good offense, right? I mean, everyone's seen the high point totals that they put up, even though I guess last week it wasn't maybe up to their lofty standards they've set for themselves. But a team that's 12th in yards per game, ninth in points per game, they score more per game than the Chargers. I wouldn't have had that going into the season at all. And so I think for the Chargers defense to take in Did you actually turn a corner in that second half? We know J.C. Jackson's going to start. We'll talk about that in the next segment. But they held the Broncos to negative nine net passing yards in the second half and overtime in that last game. I mean, it was a suffocating performance. But 
going up against an offense that everybody in the league through six weeks was talking about how bad that Broncos offense has been so far, right? And I'm sure Seahawks fans, you know, know all about that. Keep an eye on Russell Wilson. But th- I think there's definitely parallels there because the Chargers defense also has to show. And Brandon Staley as the defensive guru, right, which is what he kind of came in as, they have to prove that against a, a good Seahawks offense, against a good quarterback in Geno Smith. It's still so strange putting those words together. I I thought Gino was going to be a solid starter based on the way he played for them last season, but he's just, he's eclipsed every expectation. He's still first in the NFL in completion rate, completion percentage above expectation, top three in passer rating, top three in yards per attempt. I mean, he has been fantastic. He truly has been a top five quarterback. Now last week he didn't get a lot of help. The offensive line had more struggles than they've had at any point this season. And yet, he was able to make the throws he needed to make late in the game, and he was staring down blitzes and delivering lasers to receivers, not named DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett. I mean, he was using <laughs> secondary receivers and having a lot of success. So I'm curious about this game because when Brandon Staley was the defensive coordinator for the Rams, he was really the one that I think started the campaign of slowing down Russell Wilson. He was the one that started unleashing those two deep shells and bracket coverages, and Russell Wilson could not figure out how to beat it to yeah. save his life. And he was so hot at the beginning of the 2020 season, and really his play has been very pedestrian ever since that point, and everybody's following that blueprint now. But Geno Smith has been able to score a lot of points when teams have been doing that against him because he actually throws to the middle of the field. So yeah. I guess that's the other storyline here, just underwriting a little bit that – Brandon Staley's not facing Russell Wilson quarterback in the Seahawks now. He's got to worry about Geno Smith. Again, words I didn't think I'd be saying going into this game. Yeah, the guy who's actually, you know, thrown better and has been more more, more mobile than uh, Russell Wilson has been. He's a different threat with his legs than Russell Wilson is at this point in their careers. I think for the Chargers, it's also the big storyline is, can you keep up? Can you get the offensive pieces back or can you continue to play well offensively if you don't have some of these guys back it looked like Keenan Allen was a lock for this game coming up he made some comments this week already that has made it seem less likely and also just kind of acknowledging hey there is a chance I miss this game then I have the bye week right after right the bye week is also playing a little bit of a factor in who is going to play in this one because if they don't play this week they get an you know full few weeks off before they have to play in their next game against the Atlanta Falcons but I mean no Corey Lindsley in this last game you know Rashawn Slater is done for the season and then you also have guys like Keenan Allen who's missed every game since week one I mean those are huge huge parts of this Chargers offense I mean Corey Lindsley might be the most important out of all those guys he had a food poisoning last week of all things and the Chargers offense definitely felt that if he can be back this week in himself, that's really going to help this Chargers offense. But they also have a couple more playmakers in Donald Parham and Josh Palmer, who are both in the concussion protocol now. So they're getting really, really deep on that wide receiver's depth chart at this point. I mean, no Jalen Guyton, who is probably wide receiver four coming in. No Keenan Allen, potentially. Now you have no Josh Palmer, maybe, this weekend after he already had a concussion in preseason. I mean... Can they keep doing it with Justin Herbert just kind of using whoever? Because I think if you have to just rely on Mike Williams and he gets a heavy dose of Tariq Woolen in this game, that could be scary because he got shut down last week by Pat Sertan the second in the Broncos defense. So that brings us to the biggest matchups, which we have to get into. I mean, there's a couple of matchups that very much scare me on the Seahawks side of things. And I think a couple of matchups that the Chargers will definitely have the advantage. So we're going to get into the biggest matchups of this game. Locked on Chargers, Locked on Seahawks, crossover Thursday. But I do need to tell you guys first about something that I absolutely love and I'm a little bit personal to me because I used it to get engaged, and that is BlueNile.com. Whether you're looking to pop the question and have a milestone to celebrate or want to let your love sparkle, Blue Nile can help you make celebrations even more memorable. As the original online jeweler, Blue Nile offers the largest selection of independently graded diamonds and pieces priced significantly below traditional retailers. Blue Nile has helped millions of couples create the perfect engagement ring. It's one of the things I really like about Blue Nile, especially when you have a picky wife like I do, is being able to customize it the exact way that they want it. Whether it's the shape, size, clarity, even how it's set, you can do all of those things at Blue Nile. And if you're looking for a fine piece of jewelry to commemorate a special milestone but still having trouble choosing, Blue Nile has jewelry experts on hand 24-7, available via phone to chat or help you find a memorable gift at every budget. Shop stress-free with Blue Nile's 100% satisfaction guarantee and all Blue Nile orders are insured and shipped for free in discreet packaging. Make your moment sparkle with Blue Nile. Go to BlueNile.com and use the code LOCKEDON to save $50 on your purchase of $500 or more. That's B-L-U-E. 
N-I-L-E.com, code locked on to save $50 off your purchase of $500 or more. BlueNile.com, code locked on. All right, we are back here for a crossover Thursday with Locked On Chargers and Daniel Wade and Locked On Seahawks with Corbin Smith over there. Does a great job for 12 Nation. Love to see him. I, I have a bunch of family in the Pacific Northwest, and it's like very much a Seahawks Chargers thing this weekend between me and them. We've been going back and forth. And I think it's going to be a better game than we would have probably thought when we circled this game on our schedules at the beginning of the season, Corbin. And I think there are a lot of interesting matchups including a six-round pick in Tariq Woolen, who has just absolutely torn up the league. And I think we'll probably get into him. But where would you start as far as the matchups you've been looking at that you're looking at least most forward to watching this weekend? So I'm going to start with the Seahawks on offense because, as I mentioned early in the show, that's really the reason that this game now has a lot more intrigue maybe than what yeah. it did going into the season. I think a lot of fans – and. Us on the podcast, Rob Rang and I, we both circled this game like, oh boy, the Chargers, both of us thought were a Super Bowl potential team. Circled that like, that's going to get ugly at SoFi Stadium. Sure. That's going to be one of the games that we can mark that as a loss. And yet here we are now going into week seven, and it feels like the Seahawks very much have a chance to win this football game because the offense has been so much better than expected. The Chargers defense hasn't been quite as good as expected up until this last game played a lot better, but I'm going to the backfield because the thing that the Chargers have really struggled with this year, their linebackers in particular in the middle defending the run. Ken Walker the third looked amazing last week in his starting debut. And this is a guy that ran for over 1,600 yards and 18 touchdowns at Michigan State. But Mel Tucker, he should be sending letters to Ken Walker the third every week thanking him for getting him that monster contract Ooh. because he is the he was the guy that made that team run last year literally and figuratively and he is having that type of impact already for Seattle with Rashad Penny now done for the season and Walker had 97 rushing yards broke 14 tackles last That's week. That's insane. This guy is a monster and I look at the Chargers linebackers especially Drew Tranquil who according to Pro Football Focus has already missed 10 tackles this year. Tranquil was a player that I saw play at Carroll High School, which was in my neck of the woods where I grew up in northern Indiana. Really athletic player, can cover, but feels like that could be a real mismatch issue with Ken Walker the third, and even DJ Dallas, another physical between the tackles runner the Seahawks have on their roster. If they can get the line of scrimmage established, get their linemen to the second level on the linebackers, even the running backs up against him one-on-one, -on -one, they're giving up almost 5.7 yards per carry this year. The Seahawks love running the football. That is one of the big advantages, I think, for Seattle going into this football game. Yeah, I can't disagree. I mean, I had Kenneth Walker versus the Chargers just front seven as a whole, definitely on my list. I mean, the Chargers did, you know, have a, you know, kind of a turnaround. For, well, so I guess let's put it this way. For the first time in five weeks, the Chargers didn't give up a run of 40 plus yards, right? That's the part that it scares, that scares me the most. It's just that explosive run. I mean, they had for three games in a row given up a 50 yard run, which I'd love to know the last time that's happened. Then they give up a 40 yard run leading up to the last week where the longest run they gave up was 14 yards. So that was nice to see. It's also Latavius Murray, right? Kenneth Walker is an entirely different animal. And the Chargers have had a pretty poor tackling defense, especially if he can get in their secondary. That is something that is going to be huge. I mean, the Chargers have to tackle. They have to be able to get up there and really, I think, rally to this dude. But because I think Kenneth Walker, for as good as he's been, a lot of those have been, you know, one 69-yard run and then another 34-yard run. So you're playing against a guy who's already shown that he can be that explosive runner, right, that can cause havoc in the Chargers secondary and, the, you know, at their front seven. For me, I'm going to go with defense force for the Chargers, and I'm going to go with J.C. Jackson versus either D.K. Metcalf or Tyler Rocket. I think both of those you know, are poor matchups for him because he's been the Chargers' worst corner so far this year. And Brandon Staley said on Wednesday that he is going to be back in the starting lineup after getting benched last week against the Broncos. I mean, if I'm the Seahawks, I'm picking on that right away, right? And before this season, it was like, hey, you can try to pick on him. He might give up some yards, but he also has 17 interceptions, right? So it's like, be careful what you wish for if you're going to keep targeting him. I feel like that fear is gone already uh, with J.C. Jackson, at least this year. I mean, I know that Tyler Lockett's about 50-50, you know, maybe a little less than that in the slot, and he probably won't move to the slot. That'll be Bryce Callahan's territory. But Corbin, like, I mean, that's a matchup that should scare Chargers fans. I mean, he's getting back out there. He's in the starting lineup. And last week, just last week, he gave up, you know, two catches for 86 yards and a wide open 39 yard touchdown. So that's a matchup for me that I think could have a huge factor on, you know, if the Chargers can win this game or not. 
And DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are coming off of quiet games against the Arizona Cardinals, really because the Cardinals did a masterful job taking them out. Now, Geno Smith made them pay getting the ball to the other receivers and the tight ends late in the game, and it was a very defensive football game anyway. But I would agree that that is a matchup that could work in Seattle's favor, but I also know that J.C. Jackson, any given game, could get back to playing at a really high level. And I don't think Pete Carroll and company are going to go into this thinking, J.C. Jackson stinks and we're going to go right at him. I think they're going to be thinking in the back of the mind, like, this is still J.C. Jackson. It's been a rough start for him, but he's still a very good player. So there will still be the respect there. But sure. they might also want to see, hey, can we push him while he's down and really make this a difficult situation and force yeah. the Chargers to maybe bench him again? So certainly that would be a matchup to watch. Looking at the Seahawks on defense – I talked about Ken Walker the third and feeling optimistic about his ability to run on that Chargers defense. Well, I worry about dealing with Austin Eckler in particular because really I've called it the Alvin Kamara effect. Running backs that can catch the football as well as they can run it, they torture this Seahawks defense. And they had issues with Kamara a few weeks ago when they lost to the Saints. They had issues early in the season with running backs catching screens and dump off passes and getting big yardage. Really improved last week, but the Cardinals were down to their third string running back and a practice squad running back. So this is going to be a different animal against one of the most underrated running backs in the league, a player that I love watching run and catch the football in Austin Eckler, who runs hard. He runs with physicality, breaks a lot of tackles, underrated quickness and athleticism. Anytime I see a running back like that, that is just as good at catching the football as running it and can do damage in both areas against this defense up to last week that had been so bad and so porous, that worries the living daylights out of me, particularly with the fact the Seahawks, according to Pro Football Reference, have missed as many tackles as any team in the league. They're 41. They've been better the last two games, but sure. that has been a major issue. And Eckler, he breaks a lot of tackles by default. So, that really might be public enemy number one for the Seahawks going into this game, not Justin Herbert. I would still lean towards Herbert just because of how good of a quarterback he is. And if they have Keenan Allen, that really changes things. But I would really be concerned about Eckler because this Seahawks defense up to last week, they were just like the Chargers. They were stuffing runs, stuffing runs, stuffing runs, and then giving up a 50-yard run. And yeah. they kept giving up explosives, and they were giving up big plays. Kamara had a 54-yard screen catch. This is a nightmare matchup for them yeah. if they play the way they did the first five weeks of the season. If they play like last week and they fly to the ball and they tackle well, then they should be okay. But anytime there's a running back of that kind of talent and that versatility, that's usually a worrisome matchup for the Seahawks. They had a, a quarterback who's willing to, you know, give him 10 catches like he had in the last game. That was, you know, him throwing the ball 57 times. So I don't think that's going to happen again, hopefully, this week for the Chargers. But I'd say the last one quickly here. Mike Williams versus Tariq Woolen. I mean, I don't know if they're going to match up all the time together in this game, but I'm hoping they don't because one thing that Mike Williams has been this year, super boomer bust, right? He has three games where he's gone over 100 yards and he has three games where he's had 15 yards or less. Like that's about as boomer bust as you're going to get. He had another couple of good catches the last couple of weeks that probably were catches that didn't get called catches. But now he draws someone who's a big, physical, super athletic corner that has four interceptions already this season. And it's going to be interesting because the Chargers offense definitely struggled when Mike Williams was taken away from them basically last week. And you don't necessarily have the secondary options you normally have. Gerald Everett's sick. Donna Parham's probably going to miss this game with a concussion. Josh Palmer's probably going to miss this game with a concussion potentially. Like, so if they can take, if Tariq Woolen can take away Mike Williams, I mean, that's a huge break for the Seahawks defense. If Mike Williams can have his way and put up another explosive performance, that I think bodes well for the Chargers offense. Yeah, I actually am semi, I'm not going to say concerned, but I think that is a matchup that maybe could play into the Chargers' favor because Tariq Woolen at 6'4", 210 pounds, very rarely has receivers across from him that are bigger than him sure. or match up physically against him. Mike Williams can do that. And right. so I'm curious to see how that plays into things because he can obviously run with anybody with 426 speed and his long strides. He's an effortless 426. But he hasn't had to play against receivers that have that kind of size and that kind of length that can really beat you downfield and can win high pointing the football. So I'm interested to see how he holds up. Based on what it played like the last couple of weeks, I would think that he can handle this. But at the same time, it is a different type of challenge than what he has faced in the first five 
six games of the season. And so that is one that's very much up in the air to me. And it could be a game changer, as you mentioned. If the Chargers can get Williams established, that opens up things for some of their other receivers, whoever's available. This is a Seahawks defense that's been very generous most of the season. If Williams is taken out of the game and Woolen gets a few pass breakups or gets a fifth interception in five games and gets into Herbert's head a little bit, I mean, then suddenly the Chargers might be punchless in this game. So I do think that that is a very pivotal one-on-one matchup for both teams going into this game. Yeah, when like, you know, Austin Eckler doesn't hit the same when you don't have any other options, right? When everyone can just key in on him. It, it, it helps Austin Eckler tremendously when he has Keenan Allen out there running around. You have to plan for that, right? Or Mike Williams, who's a physical mismatch in most games, right? Not as much when you're going up against a 6-4 corner like Tariq Woolen. But it is going to be an interesting game, and I think it's a lot closer than we all thought it was going to be at the beginning of the season. So, Coming up next, we're going to be getting into what we think is going to happen in this game, the key thing that's going to probably end up deciding this game, and get into our predictions for this game. But I do need to tell you guys something, and here's a sports analogy for you. When it comes to burglars, your home is like the end zone, and you need the absolute strongest defense you can muster. This is why I use and trust Simply Safe Home Security. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. It's cutting edge technology powered by 24 7 professional monitoring agents who will always have your back so you always know your home is safe. I use Simply Safe and I love it specifically because I usually have to leave my dog home alone at work all the time. One of the nice things about Simply Safe is you can get the app on your phone and you can stream your HD cameras that are at your house straight to your phone. If something happens while you're gone, they will automatically call first responders or police if they have to, even if you can't respond to them. So for me, hey, if there's a fire or something nearby, I know that I can have Simply Safe kind of watching over my home when I can't. And they're 24 7 professional monitoring with Simply Safe agents who you can call in a moment when a threat is detected. And Simply Safe blankets your home in protection with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door. HD security cameras for inside and outside your home, smarter ways to detect motion that only alert you when a threat is real. Right now, guys, you can customize the perfect system just for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash lockdown NFL. You guys can save 20% on your Simply Safe security system. When you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month for free, visit simplysafe.com slash lockdown NFL to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. All right, well, it's time to put our money where our mouths are, I guess, on this crossover Thursday. A special thank you to Corbin Smith for coming on the show today for this crossover event, Locked On Chargers and Locked On Seahawks, in a game that all of a sudden is really exciting, right? It's going to definitely stress me out, but it's exciting that it should be a pretty good game, at least the way I'm seeing it. Maybe Corbin feels a little bit differently, but make sure you guys are also following us on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and Corbin on Twitter at Corbin Smith NFL. All right. It's time to get into the big key that's going to decide this game, Corbin. I mean, I think there's a different couple different ways I could see you going with this one. So where do you want to start? I think this really boils down to Seattle's defense. I don't expect that they're going to go out and score 19 points again. This team has too many good players, and this is a Chargers defense that's missing some key guys, including Joey Bosa. I just feel like with the struggles they've had in the secondary, this is a game the Seahawks should be able to score some points. So really, to me, if they want to win this game, it's on defense. Can you corral Austin Eckler? Don't let him dominate the game as a receiver in particular. They've had their issues defending the run, but they've been really bad for multiple years running, defending screens and defending running backs that can really be a threat out of the backfield. So can you contain him and can you get to Justin Herbert? I haven't mentioned the pass rushers, including a Chenna Nuosu, who Chargers fans know very well, but Nuosu is having a fantastic yeah, first year in Seattle. He was player of the week in week one. This has been a perfect scheme for him. And going up against Sawyer, sixth round pick, rookie out of Georgia that's built more like a guard, I think that is a matchup that I couldn't mention last quarter, but that should be in favor of Uchenna Nuosu. And Daryl Taylor on the other side going up against Pipkins, he is a blazing, speedy athlete off the edge. He's had his issues defending the run. He's light, but as a situational pass rusher, last week had a strip sack, had four pressures, really his best game of the season. I like the athleticism they have there. The question is, can you find a way to get to Justin Herbert? The Broncos were able to get some pressure on him. He had to unload the football very quickly. He's limited with his weapons. That's a great way to take Mike Williams out of the game right there if you can get pressure. So I think those are the two keys. Can you find a consistent way to get pressure on Herbert and force him to get the ball out quickly? And most importantly, not eliminate, but limit the the effectiveness for Austin Eckler. You can't let him take over the game like Alvin Kamara seems to do every time they play against him. They had their issues with McCaffrey the few times they faced the Panthers. 
those type of running back give this team issues. So yeah. can you build off of last week and get those stops in the run game and limit Eckler's effectiveness as a receiver while getting that pass rush going? If you can do that on defense, I'm confident the Seahawks can score some points in this game. And if they're able to get some stops, it gives them a much better chance to go into SoFi Stadium and get the victory. Yeah, I, I think that's huge. I mean, on the other side, I mean, Khalil Mack going up against a couple of rookie tackles is something that's going to be a huge factor in this game that we didn't talk about as well. I mean, he was great last week. I think for me, I'm going to kind of go back to one of your key things as far as the Chargers key for this game. It is also on defense because I do think the Chargers, especially with Corey Lindsley back, their guy directing things up front and really setting up all of the protections and really has been a tremendous help for Justin Herbert. That's going to be huge. Whether or not Keenan Allen, that's what sucks, right? We have to do this show not knowing if someone like Keenan Allen is going to play because if I knew Keenan Allen was going to play, I would think about this game completely differently. I don't know that. So I think on defense is going to be the biggest key for the Chargers if they want to win this game. Can the Chargers front seven corral Kenneth Walker and Geno Smith? Can you keep Geno Smith in the pocket and not let him have those couple of drives that get extended with his legs that end up turning into points, right? That could be the difference in this game if we think it's going to be a close game. And Kenneth Walker specifically, can you not give up that one explosive run that you were able to do last week? You got that win because I do think one thing we did see from Brandon Staley, which was super encouraging last week, is when they were able to get those stops on early downs, when they were able to pin Russell Wilson to the Broncos offense back, the design blitzes from Brandon Staley last week were the best that they've been all season. They had instant pressure. They had unblocked guys coming in, and Russell Wilson just never stood a chance. Geno Smith's a little bit more mobile than that, but for me, if the Seahawks are able to just get whatever they want on the ground, if Geno Smith is able to kind of you know direct things with his legs up front in combination with Kenneth Walker, I think it's going to be a really, really long day for the Chargers defense. If they can get those stops, if they can push them back into those third and longs and get into some of those packages they were last week, Maybe those are the couple of stops that end up winning you this game because I, I think both teams are going to score in this one. I, I don't have a lot of trust in the Chargers defense to really shut down the Seahawks offense by any means. Maybe they can have Geno have, you know, one of the couple of poorer games that he has this season because there's a couple of games where he's only been okay. Maybe they can create that for this week. But I don't have a lot of ton of faith in it, which is why I'm definitely going to be picking a more of a high scoring game, I think, in this one. Corbin, where are you going with your prediction for how this game plays out? I just watched the Seahawks completely go opposite direction from what I anticipated on Sunday. But yeah, I'm going to go high scoring because I just don't have, I have to see the Seahawks defense play well multiple weeks in a row. Same, yeah. And they played well against an offense that has a lot of weapons, but the Cardinals have just been terrible most of this year. And yeah. so, and they, they were getting in the red zone, then they were going forward and forth down and throwing the football when the Seahawks haven't been able to stop anybody running the ball. I mean, there were a lot of things that worked in Seattle's favor in that game. Yeah. I don't think the Chargers are going to come out and be that bullheaded about some of the things in terms of fourth downs. I mean, they'll go for fourth sure. downs, but I expect they're going to run the football and they're going to test Seattle where they've really struggled most of this season. And so, I expect it's going to be a game where Geno Smith's going to have a lot put on his shoulders, and he's shown he can do it. So I think the Seahawks are going to make this very interesting. But I think that the Chargers at home, playing in L.A., ironically, Pete Carroll, all those years at USC, he has not had success in the NFL in L.A. And so they've got to get over that curse here. I don't think they're going to find a way to do it. I think it's going to be a very close game, but – this is how high scoring I'm going. I'm going 33 to 30. I think Seattle is right with them late, but I think the Chargers are just going to have a few too many things going for them. And I just, this defense has not shown me consistency. And so until I see multiple games in a row from that defense playing at a really high level, hard to me to have faith that they're going to be able to do that against Justin Herbert, even if he is missing some of his weapons. Still feel like they have enough guys. And with Lindsey most likely coming back, that line's going to be playing better. It just seems like this is a game maybe the Chargers, just a slightly better team on paper, win this one at home by three. But I could see it going either way. Yeah, I like right around. I mean, if there's a prize pitch projection for the total of this one, right, I would go more than, right, I think is what Corbin Smith is trying to tell you there. I could see that, man. Like, that's kind of how I see it playing out. I mean, the Chargers have just given them too many big plays defensively to think that going up against DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett's not going to be a problem. Going up against Kenneth Walker is not going to be a problem, and I think the Seahawks are going to make them keep up. Can they tap into those offensive performances that they had versus the Browns, that they had versus the Texans? We're going to have to see. I, I mean, I think it's 
I have the same margin. I'm going 31 Chargers, 28 Seahawks in this one. Then I'm going to sweat it out until Sunday because I don't even have a ton of faith in that as we sit here right now with the uncertainties, right? And I think for this game, for the Chargers to have a chance to go to 5-2 and two at the bye week, right, with the them being just absolutely ravished by injuries, right? I mean, losing four of their probably top 10 players on this team so far, missing a majority of the season, that would be huge for them. And for the Seahawks, I think it's continuing to be like, hey, we are for real in the NFC West. We can hang with all of these teams, right? And we're just fine without Russell Wilson and actually making Geno Smith look better than Russell Wilson has in a few years. So I'm really excited for this one, Corbin. I mean, I think it's definitely going to be close, and I think it's definitely going to be high scoring. Yeah, I think we can both agree with that, which means it's going to be like last week, and suddenly both these teams are going to become defensive. It's going to be 13 to 10. I, just, yeah. I can't see that happening a second straight week, and – the Cardinals and the Seahawks, like I said, they just always have the weirdest games, like that 6-6 tie that happened. Yeah. I think that was 2016 or 2017. I think it was 16 because that was the end of the Stephen Hauschka era. But seeing the kickers missing easy field goals, like they always just have really bizarre games. And Sunday was no different seeing two teams with all the offensive firepower that the Cardinals Seahawks have scoring a 19-9 game. Like it yeah. just – wasn't what anybody was expecting. I can't see that happening a second game in a row, especially with Justin Herbert, the way that he can light up secondaries, the run game they've got, Seattle's weapons, Geno Smith playing like a top five quarterback for most of this season. I just, I'm anticipating there's going to be a lot of points. So get your popcorn ready. I do think yep. it's going to be a fun one at SoFi. I think it's going to be one of the funnest games of the weekend for sure. And speaking of weird games, the Chargers and Seahawks have had some weird games. I mean, when the last oh, time yeah. these teams met up, that fourth down play, right, dropped in the back of the end zone. Uh, you know, with the game on the line. And we've also seen, you know, the three touchdown by Antonio Gates game, where I still think Percy Harvin definitely stepped on the sideline on that oh, yeah. yard rushing <laughs> touchdown. But yeah, I mean, I, I still remember dude, Vincent Jackson in the rain over the shoulder. Like these teams have had some really epic, epic matchups. And I don't think there's anything that's telling me right now that this weekend should be any different. I don't think that Chargers fans should be overly comfortable thinking they're going to win. But I think if the first six games have taught them anything, it's like, hey, you can never expect too much from this team. The games are going to be tight. They have a negative point differential so far this year. So I think it's going to be another close game this weekend against the Seahawks. But thank you guys so much for checking us out and making us your first listen today on this crossover Thursday brought to you by Price Picks. Make sure you guys are always checking out the Locked On Seahawks on Twitter at Locked underscore Seahawks. You can check out the Chargers at Locked On LAC on Twitter. And you can find me on Twitter at Dan Talk Sports and Corbin Smith on Twitter at Corbin Smith NFL. Had a lot of fun doing this. Make sure you guys for 12 Nation out there, right? Make sure you guys are back for Blue Friday for the Lockdown Chargers. You guys can check back in for our keys for success for our Friday show. And hey, guys, let's get ready for a really fun matchup. So thank you guys for all checking in and make sure you find Lockdown Chargers and Lockdown Seahawks on on YouTube, where I'm, you know, at Lock or subscribe on YouTube. And you can also find us wherever you get your podcast from because it's Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day and thank you guys again for making us your first listen if you need a second listen make sure to check out the peacock and williamson show the best voice on the network brian peacock goes with former nfl scout matt williamson they do a great job keeping everyone up to date with everything going on throughout the league i mean i'm so charger centric it's always nice to get up to date with everything else going on but make sure you guys are back for the friday shows of locked on chargers and locked on seahawks and let's have a great game go 12 i'm sure corbin smith would say but i'm gonna end this thing by saying go bolts <laughs>